There we go. Welcome once again to the, our June 9th webinar. Um, our first agenda item for today is, will come from uh, Lee Lentz Edwards at Region 18 on uploading policies to the legal framework. And during her presentation, the Q&A is open for you. Uh, if you have um, some input to log into the Q&A, uh, Ms. Edwards will get that and will respond uh, either directly or in some fashion. Lee? Uh, you're muted, Lee, I'm sorry. Here, let me see if I can unmute you. Okay. There we go. Um, can you see my screen where it says uploading policies? You, we can hear you and we can see the, uh, the slide. Okay, thank you. Thanks. August 31st is a deadline for multiple things. The one we're going to cover today is that of policies. All LEAs are to have current board policies approved and uploaded by August 31st. Most school districts are current and the few with issues are working on them. That leaves the charter schools. The schools who are members of the Texas Public Charter School Association or TPCSA need to get their policies from the organization. Next, they have their boards need to approve their policies. The final step is to upload these policies. Just one second, where's the arrow? In the workbench of the account holder is the resource library. There is a PowerPoint in the resource library that is very user friendly. If you use this PowerPoint, you should be able to upload your policies easily. The PowerPoint is in the how to section of the resource library and it's choose number three, uploading policies. There are also three documents and informational items that should be helpful. The first is the Charter School Policy Assistance Handout. This is a sheet that will step-by-step step tell you what you need to do to get your policies. The second is the First Occurrence Policies Designations Guide. This shows which policies to upload to which framework. The last one is policy designations that list each of the frameworks and the policies that go with each. Charter schools that are not members of TPCSA need to contact their lawyers to get their policies, get them board approved, and then uploaded. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact your your legal framework contact or contact us here at Region 18. Leo, back thank to you me. very much, Ms. Edwards. Was that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, real good. Thank you very much. Next, um, we have uh, Jerry Clacata from TEA who had arranged for Gibson uh, Consulting Group to be here. And so, um, we're going to turn it over to um, uh, Brian Biggs to introduce the team and to address um, SPP 14 data collection. Hi, so I'm going to introduce um, Amy Rappaport and Daniel Hopner. They are our Gibson consulting team um, that works with uh, Texas Transition and TEA to help give us uh, our data to help put contact our former students and to get our statewide reports out. And so they have begun um, doing just the sample rollout uh, for contacting students. And so Amy and Daniel are going to give you an update on um, a little bit of what Indicator 14 is and how you can help us out with that. Thanks, Bryn. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are here to talk about helping 
to raise awareness and increase participation in the SPP 14 family survey. It's a, the post-school outcomes survey. Uh, you've probably heard of it. You may have heard of it referred to as post-school outcomes, as SPP 14, or possibly as the where are you now survey. Uh, let's see if I can get my screen to work. So the SPP 14 indicator is tricky. It's about following up with students who exited the, the Texas education system, who had an IEP in place at the time they exited, but who exited at least one year ago and following up with them to find out what are they doing? Where are they? Are they enrolled in post-secondary education? Are they competitively employed? If yes, in what type of employment? If no, what other kinds of things might they be doing? It's a federally required uh, indicator. I'm sure you're all very familiar with it, um, but it's not all that familiar among families or students. And so what we're really trying to do is get some help and increase awareness of the survey at the local level among LEAs, among schools, among parents and families. So when we do the survey, the sort of uh, origin of it is for this federal requirement. But we really try to gather data that will do more than just serve this required indicator that will actually be useful and actionable for LEAs. So we add some questions to the survey above and beyond SPP 14 so that when we have results and we report results out, you will get results that are helpful. So we ask about if they're in college, did they contact an office of disability services? Did they receive any services? We ask about feed, we ask them for feedback on their high school experiences and what aspects of high school experiences were particularly helpful in making their transition post to post-secondary or to employment. There's a couple of other questions and we'll show you some of these when we show you the reports, but we want everybody to be more aware of the, the data that we are collecting because we do want it to be useful to school districts. And so we need help. In lots of different ways we need help. We need help reaching families that exited over a year ago. We need help raising awareness on the ground about the fact that this survey exists. The survey goes out every year. Uh, this is our team's second time helping Texas with it, but it's not the second time Texas has done the survey. It's a federal requirement, so it's always happening. The more we can raise awareness about the survey, the more responses that we'll get. And the more responses that we'll get, the better our data will be. So we'd like help encouraging participation and also co collecting better contact information so that in subsequent years, when we do this again, we have some better information from which to contact our exited students. The timeline of the survey is a little bit tricky in terms of enabling us to collect data. And that's because we have to wait for that one year to go by before we contact families. So last summer was the first summer that we did the survey for TEA and we were, it was the summer of 2021 and we were contacting families that had exited in 2020. So this year, summer of 2022, we're contacting a cohort of students who exited in 2021. So students who just graduated this past couple of weeks, we won't survey them until next summer. And so just keep that in mind when you think about ways in which you can help us elevate the awareness and participation among families. So our survey for 2022 is currently live. Uh, it opened January 1st, or June 1st, and it will be open until the end of September. We have over 30,000 exited students distributed across 1,200 LEAs in the state. As I'm sure you can imagine, this is an enormous effort. And we encounter a lot of challenges in trying to reach them. Uh, we have very poor contact information for students in particular. For students, the vast majority of email address contact information we have is a district provided email address, which those students clearly are no longer using as they, they've exited the district over a year ago. And so we'd love for LEAs to work on collecting better contact information from students before they exit the system. So a year later, when we try to reach them, we have a valid working email address. Another challenge is just low awareness. People haven't. They've never heard about the post school outcome survey. Uh, they, it, they don't know that it's real or that it's valid. And so we want to 
increase sort of a brand awareness that this is a real thing, that the state is doing this every year, and that later when they get that invitation, they should recognize it hopefully and participate more readily. And our, the third challenge to talk about is simply the low response rate. And these all contribute to a low response rate. So last year when we did this, we send email at, we send email invitations to every email we have on file. We send text messages to every phone number we have on file. We, we call people's homes and we send out mailers. We had 256 LEAs last year that didn't get a single response from their exited students. And we had only a 5% response rate to emails, which is very low. We do a lot of surveys across the state in an education setting and 5% is very low. And we had less than a 2% response rate to mail postcards. And again, we attribute that to just sort of lack of awareness. And we, postcard responses are typically low, but not 2%. Something more like 10% would be more acceptable. So we have developed a portal to help give you tools and resources to help us increase awareness and increase responses. Uh, for those of you who are involved in Indicator 8, we have a similar portal for Indicator 8. We run that uh, data collection for the state as well. And so this may look familiar to you. Um, for those of you for whom this is new, we hope you get some ideas from looking at what we've built. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna ask Daniel to share his screen. Daniel and I work on this together. Uh, and Daniel has built an interactive platform online that's like a one-stop shop for all the different ways in which you can get information about the survey. Hi everyone, uh, as Amy mentioned, uh, my name is Daniel. I also work on this project. I just wanted to give you a quick tour of everything we have in the web portal. Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger for you all. Um, so it has a number of pages and the first page just kind of shows you uh, an introduction to indicator 14, what it is, the kind of schedule that we already showed you uh, and that information along with a list of some ways that uh, ESCs and also you all uh, at, the, at the LEA level uh, can help us. Uh, the second tab I'm going to show you is uh, what we call our templates and tools page. And basically, this just has a variety of materials that you could use um, to send to students to help publicize the survey and also to invite students to participate in the survey. Um, we do receive contact information from the state that you all had submitted, um, but you all have that contact information. So nothing is stopping you from also contacting students uh, if you wanted to try and get your response right up. Um, so you'll see we have various email and social media templates. We have some print resources. We can also develop personalized flyers that have students' names and the PIN number that they'll need that you could distribute. If you've got some other way of getting in touch with students that we don't have available to us, uh, along with some other resources here, such as a parent FAQ and links to some other of the Texas Transitions and Indicator 14 pages. <clears throat> Uh, the next page we have, and I'll just click over to this one, is our response rates dashboard. And this basically um, lets ESCs and LEAs know um, what their response rate is and kind of the areas where they can maybe see some improvement. Um, so we've got uh, one of the region's response rates pages up here, and you can see in this circle graph, we've got uh, region six in the center. If you mouse over it, you may not be able to see here, but you can see the response rate and the total number of exited students in the state. And, you know, from this, we can see that we've had some luck in College Station and Navasota, for example. We've had less luck in some of these other districts, um, although, you know, we're still early into the administration process. Uh, you can also have another view here that shows the, the comparison to statewide, see which regions are doing better than others, and a map view of that as well. Just to show you a couple of the other pages, we also have an FAQ and this is aimed towards administrators like yourselves. So this may answer some of the questions that you have. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna skip the sample report because Amy's gonna show us more of that in a moment. Um, and then there's just a couple other pages that are about the dashboard and how to contact us. Um, so hopefully this information will be useful uh, for you all as we try and increase awareness of the survey project. So Dan, I didn't have those reports in my slides. Can we pull it up on the portal and I can walk them through it? Or do, would you prefer I pull one up here? Oh, there you go. So the, the report is pretty nifty. Um, we're able to produce one of these for any LEA that has at least 10 responses. And it, it starts on the first page and it sort of shows you everything you need to know about your LEA and the number of exited students that were in your LEA. And it, the first column there is your district and the next is the statewide comparison numbers. This particular example is um, us, we've mushed together 
lots of LEAs that had very small numbers of responses. That's why it says masked districts. But imagine that that's your LEA name. So you can see the total number of exited students, the number who submitted a completed survey, the response rate, and then how many were completed in English versus Spanish and how many campuses that represents. And then on the first, if you scroll down, we just see the demographic characteristics of those respondents. And that helps to know how representative the data are. So if you received, for example, if you have 50% of your students who exited are male and 50% are female, but 99% of your responses are coming from females, that tells you something about how representative or not your data are. So we have this representativeness table on the first page. Then we get into the actual survey responses. Indicator 14, I mapped out on the first slide, we have what percent are in higher education, what percent are competitively employed, what percent are in another type of employment. These are, again, the federal indicator measures. And past that, past those, we start getting into more of those LEA-specific feedback questions. Um, it shows you, again, how many in your district or LEA responded, yes, they're in a two or four year institution. So for this report, there were 342 students who said, yes, they're enrolled in a two or four year institution. They then get some follow-up questions. Did you contact an office of disability services? If you did, which services did you receive? So there are some visualizations here that we hope will be helpful. And then on the next page, we show, okay, there were 822 in this LEA that were employed during the past year. So then we asked them, well, did anybody help, anybody help you obtain that job? And there's some response options and we visualize those results for you. Um, and then on the next page, again, some feedback questions. This is from last year's data, by the way. Um, there were, what was the most helpful part of high school in terms of preparing you for life after high school? So there's some data there. Last year, we had a question about COVID and how much it impacted their plans. And so we had some, some visualizations there. So this is just an example of the types of report you can get. So we wanted to sort of um, increase awareness that helping us to get responses helps us to populate these reports. And so it's not only helping the federally required indicator, it's also giving your LEA feedback that is from parents and families and students in your LEA that we hope will be helpful to you as you're reviewing your services and looking to make improvements. Did we miss anything? Um, so in terms of getting access to the portal, Bryn, there's, uh, we've given each ESC contact a link for all of the LEAs in that ESC. And so that would be your person to go to to get the link for your region. Bryn, do you have better terminology for me about who that person would be? So you would contact either the transition um, specialist in the in your ESC. So if you're in region six, if you're in region 18, um, you would contact your transition specialist or the um, special education director uh, for that ESC. And they will have the link to that um, dashboard that they can share with you. Okay, I think that's it. Anything, any questions that popped up or anything? I don't see any. Leo? No, uh, we don't have anything in, in the Q&A at this point. So it sounds like folks have reference of where they can go for the link, um, uh, as well as um, the information provided here. So if, um, if that concludes the, the presentation, I think we are near the end of our webinar. Oh, I think a question just popped up. Oh, um, are these slides going to be posted on the uh, webinar pages? And typically, do you do that? Ours, I mean, since you recorded it, it's already on the webinar. It, it is. It'll, it'll be posted within a few days on uh, the landing page for the webinar. Um, and we do often post additionally uh, a slide deck, but not always. We're happy to hand that to you. I don't know, uh, Jerry, if we should give that to you or Bryn. I guess we'd give it to Bryn and Bryn can give it to whoever it needs to go to at TEA. Uh, and then one, just one more question, required or recommended? Required or recommended what? It, uh, participation on the survey. 
required or recommended? Oh, it's definitely recommended. There's no requirement. We can't force anyone to fill out the survey. That's why we're trying to do more awareness of the importance of this information and trying to reach everyone as, as much as possible. Because the more people who respond, the better our data is so that our school districts and our state can improve on what they're doing and work on those areas that we're not doing as well. And so the more information we can get would be very helpful, but it is not required, but it is a state requirement that we do this process. And I'll add to that, you know, we got, we got about 20% response rate last year, maybe a little bit higher than that. Um, and so when you think about the results, you know, you think about who's, who's missing, who do, who do we, who we not have represented in that. And for the LEA level, which I think a lot about, I think about giving, you know, results that are useful to LEAs. There was a huge swath of LEAs that didn't even get one because there wasn't enough participation. And so, you know, yes, we have to tick off this federal uh, reporting requirement, but we want to do more than that. And we want to have um, more participation so that we can have more LEA reports delivered to you that you can use. All right. Okay. Um, thank you all for attending. Thanks presenters for being here and presenting today. And uh, um, those of you who are attending, um, thanks for being here. Our next webinar will be on June 23rd. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>